I had zero on taking another look at Nick Fury with the SA team here on Doom 3.5. Now I've moved up to 3.5. Um, we looked at him before at 3.4, and there are some subtle differences in the way that um, that some of the nodes play out. Not huge, huge, but just something to be aware of so that you can reduce as much RNG as possible. Um, the only difference that I have in this video from any of my characters is Nick Fury is now... Um, five stars with six red, or five reds with uh, six yellows, as opposed to last time I only had four of the reds. Um, I do recommend with Nick Fury that if you're going to make him huge, if you're going to make him really big, to go ahead and put a T4 in that special just for the additional healing. But since I have him at only 75, 14, it's not going to make a huge difference in my build because of the way in which I use him. Um, I have still been continuing since that last video. I have continued to run Captain Sam as a uh, as a healer, and I've found that it gives me really good results. Uh, but if you leave him as skirmisher, totally understand. You know, it might not be worth the ISO change to you. Um, Kestrel, I've always had as a healer. That is just how I've always ran her since I've unlocked her. Um, I have not invested any more in this team from going to 3.4 to 3.5, and I still clear it very easily every day. Um, but there are some things to um, to be aware of when you're looking at um, 3.5 versus how 3.4 plays out. So I'm going to take a look here at um, a video that I made yesterday morning um, going through all three nodes of 3.5. Um, so I've changed my setup a little bit. I've kind of played around going back and forth with positioning. Um, I do want to make sure that Kestrel for sure is next to Nick Fury in this first node so that she gets the um, so that she has a good chance of getting the energy anyways, uh, just in case. I usually don't have a problem with building up her cooldowns, but you know it, it's pretty important to have her special going into node two from what I found. Um, so I'm playing out the first node pretty much identically as I did um, in 3.4. There's not much change in node one or in the boss node. Really the change comes into place in node two. And you'll see what I mean here coming up soon. So for this first node, I want to make sure that I'm using that Cap Sam special or his basic. I'm not using his alt at all in this first node. And I've gotten away from using the Maria Hill ultimate at the end of this node. Um, that was something that kind of carried on from my strategy I used with Zemo. Um, and I've, I've gotten away from using her alt at all together here. So I'm pretty much looking around at uh, turn meter and controlling characters. I don't want, in this node, I don't want either of the Thors or the Punisher to get a turn. Um, I want them to die before they get a turn, just basically, or to make sure that they just don't ever take their turns. And that'll help ensure my health here. Um, then after that, I'm kind of looking at turn meter and going off of turn meter. I don't want to get caught behind the taunt of, um, of Sif. But if you look at her turn meter, it's pretty easy to control. Now out here on the field, I have, um, with Nick Fury's summons, I have almost every character is going to be assisting with a slow, uh, with the exception of Kestrel and Cap Sam. So there's a really high probability that I'm going to be slowing the enemy down with every single assist. Now... Sharon Carter will reduce turn meter along with putting on the slow and that uh, the female shield minion, the shield operative, um, she will rewind turn meter. She doesn't apply a slow, but she does rewind turn meter. But Sharon does both. She actually applies a slow and rewinds turn meter um, on her assist. So this team right here is really good at controlling the field once they get going. Now moving into node two, um, it can be difficult. Sometimes you can um, you can do too much damage in this first node if you don't watch how you're playing it, and or if you have different ISO setups or different build than me, um, you might have a difficult time getting that ultimate built back up for Nick Fury um, going into node two. So I'm gonna pause this video real quick while I talk about this. So going into node two, um, my strategy will change depending on whether. 
the boss node is still up or not. So if the boss node is still up like it is, and I'm going to be playing all three nodes here, um, I am going to take out Sharon Carter and put in Zemo. So that's what I'm about to do right here. And if I just have to clear the first two nodes and the boss node is not up, then I'm going to substitute uh, Nick Fury for Zemo is how I play this. I don't have the rest of my rebirth built yet, so I'm still playing this with SA and Fury. So that's kind of the purpose behind this video here. I do plan on building my uh, my invaders. I'm not going to build them until I absolutely have to, like I do with all my builds. So the first thing I want to do, um, regardless of whether I'm doing this with Nick Fury or with Sharon Carter with my Zemo, um, is I want to AB on Morbius. So kind of the reason why I need Zemo in this second node here is because of the size of my team and everything like that. Um, with Morbius's opening move, and he goes so fast that you're not going to stop him from taking his first turn. Um, with Morbius's opening move, um, he does that splash damage with a lot of bleeds, and that can kill one or more of my characters. So I don't really want anyone if i'm if i'm going to be hitting all three of these nodes i don't want anyone besides zemo to die um on node two and once this node gets rolling if you lose somebody you can end up losing multiple people so that is why i do this now Um, anytime you're playing this node, regardless of your team composition, um, anytime you're playing this node, if something is to go wrong and you are not um, able to clear this node, if you already have a Ghost Rider and or Death Pool on the field, retreat. Do not just leave that node for someone else to come into and get slapped around. It's easier to play this node fresh than it is to play it um, with somebody half beating it. So you don't want to leave a mess for your lane partner. And again, I'm going through looking off of a turn meter here, um, controlling the field. I know that I'm going to have an opportunity to build quite a bit of cooldowns back up um, with Mum. I don't play it quite perfectly, but I play it pretty good um, for getting cooldowns back. I do milk this node quite a bit. So we'll be watching this for a couple minutes here. I would like to kill Miles before he gets at, um, before he gets his first turn off of but I was not able to, so I, I wasn't going to burn that special right here because um, I, I do want to have that available for me for starting the boss node. So I figured I'd take this hit by Miles and just heal back up. Um, oftentimes that hit from Miles can kill my Zemo even at uh, gear tier 16, but it didn't this time, so that was nice. But I have yet to have fury die from that though even at uh, 75 14 so and we'll get some heals i'm not worried about the special from shang chi for the beginning of next node so i'd rather do that than spend my heals i do want to get my cooldowns built up both my cooldowns built up for cap sam um, i do want to make sure that i have that ultimate option available for shang chi i want to make sure that i have the ultimate available for Kestrel as well as for uh, Nick Fury, so I give myself options depending on how the RNG of the node goes. Um, it's, and the more options that you have, the more various situations that um, that you're able to handle here. Now I did choose to go for that mom intentionally there, as opposed to his summon, because he had that. I knew that Kestrel wasn't going to um, bounce over to somebody else because he had that counterattack. Um, but where I did misplay a little bit, at, or I, I wouldn't even call it a misplay, I, I actually built all my cooldowns, but if I wanted to milk it further, um, with Nick Fury I would have attacked into Mum too with that counterattack since Nick Fury does uh, chain over as well. But I did actually get all of my cooldowns perfect, all of my cooldowns are completely cooled down. Um, so I'm going to take Zemo back out, and I will put Sharon Carter in. 
<laughs> and this node is just absolute cake. So again, as always, I want to get Nick Fury's summons out as quickly as possible. Um, I, my main concerns here, I don't want um, I don't want Madeline Pryor to take a turn, and I don't want Doom to ult. I want to make sure that I get an ability block on Doom before I knock him under 50% health. We use that alt to clear the taunt from Strife. So with this node here, um, to, to be a good lane partner, if you still have Doom and or Emma Frost, either of those two characters on the field, um, and Emma Frost has already dropped in, and the node goes south for you, don't leave the node like that for, for whoever's coming back in. Um, you know, Emma Frost is going to speed up the team, the enemy, all the enemies, and make them get ahead of your whoever tries to go in there to clean up your mess. And you don't want to leave that for somebody. Now, if somebody leaves that for you and you have this Zemo option, um, again, you'll you'll want to go in and take Zemo in here. You can do one of two things. You can either replace Nick Fury with Zemo, or you can replace uh, Sharon Carter with Zemo. Either one's going to work pretty well for you, and you'll just want to um, AB, uh, if Doom's on the field, AB him off the bat because you don't know what condition your teammate left him in for you, or if Doom is not on the field but Emma is, um, AB Emma so that she does you know, just in case she comes in and cleanses so she doesn't cleanse the slows off of everybody or the ability blocks off of everybody. So I save my special for the second wave with um, Kestrel, and I save my alt with um, Nick Fury, or not Nick Fury, sorry, with Captain Sam for the second wave. Um, so that way, once we get all these characters on the field here, they're going to give us a whole bunch of speed bar, and I'll also have a whole bunch of characters um, to put that defense down on with um, with Kestrel. Now, since I already have the stun on Madeline Pryor, I want to get that stun on to Emma. Um, I don't want Emma to take any turns because I don't want her to cleanse, and I don't want um, I don't want Polaris to take any turns either, so I want to get rid of her as well. Um, I'm not really so worried about Morbius. You know, I can control him for the most part. Um, the, the two Carnages can pose a problem if you let them get out of hand and you'll see that I do a little bit here um, not too bad but yeah and I, and I definitely don't want uh, Madeline Pryor to ever take a turn any of the Madeline Pryors so I play this um, probably a little bit differently here at the end than what would be like optimal so I know that um that I want to keep my options open for tech later on. And sometimes Kestrel does really, really well on the boss battle. So I want to try to keep my Kestrel um, with her cooldowns. So I could I could have ended this without getting so much damage, but I don't lose anybody. Mm. And I end up getting everybody all healed up. Um, so I'm, I'm really not worried about it. None of the other characters will be used again, so I'm not worried about any of their cooldowns. And we'll get Kestrel healed up here with that special from um, from Shang-Chi here in a second. So, so hopefully this video has been helpful for you. And not only explain like the RNG that I got here, but also your options for... Um, if you get different RNG or if different scenarios happen so that way you can never lose these nodes because I, I really I come in I play this uh, I play these skill nodes every single day and I'm not having any trouble whatsoever and this and Nick Fury is the only invader I have built at all and I only have him to 75 14 and I don't have all of his T4s on him I only have um, just his ultimate and his passive so uh, good luck